I'm going to show you how you can do a project-based learning task to really uh, reinforce math skills in this case for this one and show how they're useful for solving problems in the real world. That's what it's all about. We want students to be able to take the knowledge and the skills that we give them and use them for actual abilities. So if I look at this, this is a, the Acer Iconia tab. Um, they make an Android based one and a Windows based one. So what you see here is a tablet, a full touch screen, multi-touch slate tablet like the iPad. You can see it's about the same thickness, length and width dimensions. Um, and the difference with this is that it runs Windows, so it can run any programs you would run on a normal Windows computer. And it comes with a, a chiclet style keyboard that you can dock it into and use uh, USB ports and devices. There's USB, two USB ports on the tablet and you still get access to two when it's docked into one of them as well. So you can plug in a mouse or you can plug in an external hard drive or a flash drive to store information. So I'm just going to dock it for the purposes of showing this video, but I'll use the tablet touchscreen to show you how much you can do with this. So in this project-based learning example, I would give students a 3D model in Google SketchUp um, of a basic little house with a patio area. And the task I would give them is, let's find out how much it will cost to, and how many bags of concrete we will need to pour this patio here with some quickcrete. So I'm just going to use a basic concrete patio, and you can. This is a, a Windows-based program, also works on Mac OS, but doesn't work on iPads. And what we can do then is students will say, okay, well, how do I go ahead and figure this out? So they have to figure out all the steps that are required. Well, first of all, we need to know how much volume of concrete is there, and how much volume of concrete uh, we can get out of a bag of concrete. So to do that, one useful feature is they could use an ebook. So they can have their math textbook right here, just like they use in their classes, is the California HSP math curriculum. And so based on the skills they're learning, we could skip to the measurement chapter and they could then go ahead and look up, okay, I need to know how to do surface area and volume, and they can refer to what they need. This is an ebook, it's just like a textbook, but it has audio support for reading out loud of passages to help students that have trouble reading. It has interventions to walk them through the steps and show tutorials has games, virtual manipulatives, other things. However, this is flash based, so you would not even be able to access this on an iPad. So let's say I want to find volume. I can go to that chapter and it'll load up the find volume section. There's You can play audio clips for each segment and it shows diagrams to show how we would do this. Okay, so I know if I have a, a rectangular prism here, I would need to find the three dimensions, length, width, and height. Or if I had a rectangular prism, I would need to find uh, base times height. Basically, I'm finding the area and then multiplying it by the thickness. Okay, so they can get some basic reminder of how to do it here on their own independently, or they could even use as intervention tools to find more interventions. Here's one that teaches you how to do find the volume. And it's loading up, and again, flash base. We can make this bigger if we need to. So they can learn the math here to walk them through the steps, remind them what the vocabulary is, and then they can get practice here by doing the math and independent practice to see how much they know it. So this is all independently guided and students can really get the support and, um, and reinforcement that they need. So let's say they know how to do it. Okay, they figured out we basically find the surface area and multiply it by the thickness. Well, now I know how to do this. Let's go in and figure that out. So they'd go into their model and maybe change the camera view to a, to a top view so they can see, all right, I'm looking at this area here. I've got a triangle. I've got a, it's a very ab, abnormal shape. Um, it's not a, a regular polygon. It's an irregular one. So what we need to do is split it up and break it up into a shape that's more manageable. So maybe the easiest way to do this would be to scroll over here, and take our pencil tool, and just slice it up here. Went a little bit too far there, so I'm going to undo that. It's a little bit hard to see with your finger, but this can be done. Let's try that point over, snap it to the edge there, and then I'd want to draw another line down here. So we take another line tool, and draw it down to the edge, and now I've got three shapes that are manageable. Okay, I've got triangle, triangle, and a rectangle. Now, if people know how to do the surface area, they'll know they don't need to know the hypotenuse of the triangle. They just need to know the base and the height for these right triangles here. is even easier than other triangles. So we take our um, 
measurement dimensions tool and we can just go ahead and click on a line here and get the dimension of that line. Okay, that's 22 feet and it's going to be the same there. This one is, you can see it's a little bit tricky to click directly on it, 11 feet. And this one is, the base there is 22 feet. So this program wasn't designed for tablets, but it can be used on one. Uh, I personally find it easier still to use with the mouse. Let's see what the height of this rectangle is here for, or this side of the triangle there. Take our dimension tool, click on that line, get it selected, and I see that's 22 feet as well. So I can find my surface area very easily this way. 22 by 11, half of that, half of 22 feet times 11 feet, half of 22 by 22, because I can see it's the same there. I could always add more dimensions if I need to. And we can rotate down now. And once I find that surface area, I can multiply by the, the thickness. Now the thickness is gonna be uniform here for all of them. So I can just zoom in as much as possible. And, and this does work a little bit better with a keyboard, I mean with a mouse and a keyboard because you, there's keyboard shortcuts and there's uh, mouse shortcuts you can use with multiple buttons to be able to do this. So we can really get that thickness of that concrete slab there. So we'll go ahead and click on it and move it out. We see that's six inches. Well, here's where ratios and conversions come in. We know that if we're doing uh, math with feet and inches, we want it to be uniform. We can't just multiply inches times feet and get a correct answer. So we have to convert it into a uniform measurement, either all feet or all inches. And since we want to know our cubic feet to figure out how much concrete we need, we'll convert six inches to feet or a fraction of a foot. And in this case, it's half of a foot. So we know that when we do our volume, we're going to find th volume of basically three different shapes here, a rectangular prism and two triangular prisms, and we're going to do it by feet by feet times a half of a foot. So then students can actually go into, by multitasking here, I've got multiple windows open, they can switch back and forth easily, and they can start entering their, their formulas here. So we would give the students the, the amount of pounds of of concrete that you would need to pour a cubic foot of concrete uh, because that's not something they're going to know on their own. So I would tell them, okay, it's 133 pounds per cubic foot and you get 60 pounds out of a bag. We're going to use 60 pound bags. So how many 60 pound bags would be needed? Well, that's going to be the total amount of cubic feet times the pounds per cubic foot divided by the pounds per bag. So when we find out our cubic feet here, we would just go ahead and I'm going to use the virtual keyboard. You can, of course, save time by plugging in and using it as a laptop. This really helps text input. But the built-in virtual keyboard's not bad either. The Windows virtual keyboard is a little bit better in some ways than the iPad keyboard. The, the buttons are smaller, however, you get everything you need on one screen. On the iPad, you have to switch back and forth to get punctuation and numbers. In this case, we've got all of our punctuation. It's just like a regular keyboard. You've got punctuation and numbers right here. So if I want to do a formula, I'd put equals. Let's make sure we're in the formula bar first. Equals. And then I can put parentheses around each segment I want to do. So let's do the the rectangular prism first, 22 feet times 11 feet times 0 0.5 feet. And then I can end that, and then I do plus, and then I'll do the triangles. So one of the triangles was 22 by 22, but of course it's half of that. So again, the formula for a triangle would be 22 feet base times height times one half, so we got 0 0.5, and that's our surface area, so we still have to do times half a foot again um, to get the volume of that triangle. So there's our second triangle, and then we can go ahead and do plus this last one, and you would do the last triangle dimensions, and if we forget them, we can go back, and we can move around the screen and it looks like it erased that dimension over there, but it was 22 feet there as well. So now I've got 11 by 22 by a half. So I can then go back to here and do my 11 feet times my 22 foot height, that's base times height, times one half, times half a foot for the thickness. 
So now I've used my formula and just plugged in the numbers to find the cubic feet. There's how many cubic feet I'm going to pour. So now pounds per bag, how many bags do I need? I can just do equals this one times this one and then divide that by this one. And we can round that off if we want to. If we have 670.54, students know we can't buy 54 hundredths of a bag, so we would have to round it up to the next whole bag. I would need 671 bags of concrete. Let's see how much it's going to cost. To do this, you could send them to an authentic task, such as going to homedepot.com and figuring out the cost per 60 pound bag. 267 each. We can plug that in. And let's go ahead and put it in there. And then our total cost is going to be equal to the number of bags needed times the cost per bag. And we now have figured out our total cost. In fact, the number of bags needed, we would need to find the ceiling of that. It's going to cost a little bit more because we'd have to find another whole bag. But we have a good total cost estimate, almost $1,800 here. And this is an authentic task that students used using a flash-based ebook another window using finding the cost of materials, a spreadsheet program, and this is openoffice.org's spreadsheet calc program, which works uh, pretty much just like Microsoft Excel, but it's free. Uh, openoffice.org is a free to download version of Microsoft Office Suite and using Google SketchUp, which is also a free CAD design program, pretty full featured and powerful considering um, what you get for the money, which is no investment at all. and. Uh, you can, you can use it on a tablet if it's a Windows-based tablet. It works on Mac OS, but it does not work on iPads. So there's three reasons you wouldn't be able to do a project-based learning task like this on the iPads. One, you can't run Windows programs. Two, you can't multitask, having more than one thing open at the same time, and that can be extremely important for doing projects on the computer. And three, it doesn't run Flash, so anything Flash-based, such as this e-textbook here, would not work on the iPad, although you probably could get around that by finding other resources and websites and YouTube videos and things like that that would show you how to do the volume and area for this particular example.